What's going on world? I'm your host George Kill and we're back with part two of a sneak peek inside Jumpman Bostick's All Jordan Collection. Following the customs and PEs that dominated the first episode, part two sees an abundance of rare Jordans past the Air Jordan 14 model and more. Check it out. This is a shoe that people really slept on. This shoe went to the outlet, the copper 17s. I don't know how many people remember these. The Mule 17, I haven't seen too many people with those, and even the black. The Cherry Woods, 16. Either with or without the shroud. Uh, the 14s. I have two pair of the last shots. One I'll never wear because it was his last shot with the bulls and this shirt right here says it all. Just just look, look at the crowd. If you look at the crowd, look at their faces. They already knew it was over before the ball even went in the basket. So it's a shoe that, you know, I have on display over there that I, I would just, I'll just never wear it. The Laney, 14s, and for a 19.99 shoe is still wearable. The gingers. These are shoes that when I wear them, people are like, man, sell them to me. Sell them to me when I display them at sneaker shows. Sell them to me, sell them to me. You know, it's something about the gray box. The OG 11 low. You can see what I call lemonade on the bottom. People want to call it another four letter word. I don't do the soul, you know, soul swapping or I forgot what it's called where they change the soles back. I don't do any of that. I just leave them as they are. That's the natural aging of a shoe. Just looking at the left shoe. And what I'm getting at is the jump man. I had this conversation with several people and you look at it, only on the left shoe, the jump man changed. From the 1995 to 2006, on the left shoe, the jump man was facing to the front. 2006, starting with the DMP, with the gold jump man, they started going to the heel of the shoe, only on the left shoe. So people want to call this shoe fake are people that's newbies in the game that don't really know. Even the so-called blue tinted, updated bottoms, they still gonna turn on you. There's nothing you can do, wear your shoes. Wear your shoes. Showed you the toe cap tins, but I, I didn't take them out. So here's a look at them. Out. This is just a lovely shoe and have all his accolades on the bottom up until the time he retired, his first retirement. These are the very first trainers that Roy Jones Jr. used to train in for boxing. But wrestlers used to wrestle in these shoes, the Roy Jones Jr. boxing shoes. And I actually wear these. I wear them with jeans. You know, I mean, it's a nice casual look. I collect everything because it's, it's a passion. It's not what's just hot to people. It's what, it's what I like. And here is uh, some boxing shoes with the 3M tongue. Some team shoes. These are the ones that came with the backpack back in the day. It was four different colorways in these. The fusion section, you know, a lot of people, you know, just basically wrote these shoes off, you know, as, as a bad deal between Air Force Ones and Jordans, where, I, you know, those are two of the top shoes ever made. So I didn't see a problem with them collabing at all. And this is kind of like a shoe with the, um, the K54 where it's just a release for an a, a international uh, game that's over there in, uh, in France. The team shoes, back in 98. People, you know, want these to release. I, a lot of people remember the black and the red ones, but this is the Michigan colorway here. One of my favorite players that 
that ended up having some substance abuse problems was Vin Baker, back with Seattle. The original Jumpman Pro. And a lot of times, the quality on these shoes were better than the numbered Jordan. Probably leftover materials that, that they could use. Less of them made. That's hard to explain why some of the team shoes, um, even like with these, the Gray Nurse Fusion 5s. This material on here is just buttery soft. And some of the other shoes that released around that time, say the uh, Orion 7s. I mean, the leather was so stiff but if they used this on there, that shoe would have been buttery because it was a colorway that hadn't released before. This is the actual, this is called the, the Jordan, this sex is the Team J, is what it is. And then this one is the Eddie Jones PE of the same shoe. And you can see the difference in the tumbled leather, and this is more of a smooth leather. And this one is like buttery soft, and this one's a little more firm. The other Vin Baker, the Jumpman Vindicate. This is just a classic. Here is the, the first Trunner from 2000. You know, I was reading online with these shoes that there's a metal piece back here. And you know, you push it, you see how it goes in? These shoes were rumored to rupture the the material here and this metal piece would rupture people's Achilles. It was a bunch of lawsuits with this shoe. So these shoes were recalled and what they did, they came back with a remake that's not like that. The greatest deep threat ever. Randy Moss with the Jordan Trifecta. The original Super Freak. And I'm gonna show you the difference in a minute. This is the one that had the 84 on the tongue, his number. All right, the remake. It has 23 on there because Randy is no longer a member of Jordan brand. It's the Mossify. You've been Mossify. And that's when you know he catch the deep ball. And you know, that M, wow, 12 8 of 2001. I got these. The receipt is still legible. Derek Jeter, I can't leave, can't leave without talking about my man Derek Jeter. These are like his, his workout or, you know, the, the turf shoes. And these pinstripe boys, these, these are just, just killers. I like these. A pair of my older trunners too. You know, these one of the first ones. This one actually came with a green and black 45 jersey. Yeah. Cause I have all the jerseys from high school to college, to the Bulls, to, to the Wizards, and even the Bullets. You know, when, he, when they first went there, it was the Bullets, but they, they made them change the name because the Bullets were derogatory, and, and plus Washington at that time was the murder capital. So they, they said, well, we want a, a name that's, that's not controversial, that's not negative, so they changed to the Wizards. A lot of people didn't know that. High school, and we went on to UNC, the home jersey. These are the uh, alternate jerseys with just the NC on there. They only wore these for certain games. And this is the away. This is one of my faves. Uh, just that black and that Carolina blue. Olympic circuit. Right here. And this is the one with the, uh, the dream team. This was $80. These are the alternate. Now these go with the pack that came out, the six and the seven, but these came out before those shoes came out. So I had, I had these and I didn't have anything to wear with them until that pack came out. Then we moved on to the Bulls. The away, the home, then this 
this sick pinstripe. Then I got a few for my, before my son was born, you know, I wanted to, well, this is the actual old school. This is his rookie jersey with the Chicago written in cursive. And I actually picked these up before my little man was born, you know, cause I wanted to have some stuff for him to wear. And there's another one in his size so we could, we could match. I scooped these up, the home and away bulls. I thought that was pretty cool. Uh, also had the flight suits. I don't know how many people have, are, have seen or are into these. these. This one actually goes with the Jordan 21s, which I'll show you in a minute. This blue one here goes with some Jordan boots that I have, some gray Jordan downtown boots is what it's, is what it's called. And this is the 14 leather jacket that Dr. Dre wore in a video with Eminem. And this is one Eddie Jones was promoting in a book in a uh, Jumpman 23 book. The jacket for the fives that actually have the shoes on the, on the inner lining. And the varsity jacket with your Jumpman on the back. This is one of the latest jackets to come out with a mixture of your leather and suede with your, your woven Jumpman on there. The vest with your jump man down here, elephant print. Go with your, your eights, the do the right thing, threes. All his accolades here, like on the bottom of the tens. And then this is definitely a fave with the Chicago skyline. The hats that came with the, uh, the Barons that released the ones, the nines, and the teams. The OG championship hat from Starter. And this, this is the hat that came with the 2003 12s. They even made jeans to go with the shoes. These go with those, the burgundy fives and the jacket and also with those. These go with the 11 lows, and then these go with the, the Finding Moments pack. The Wheaties boxes, I have 19 of them total. And most of them still had a cereal in them. I never cracked a seal on them or anything. This is a Space Jam one. This is one with MJ wearing the threes. Some of the, the greatest ever. Walter Payton, Mary Lou Retton, Tiger Woods. All of them on the box, Bruce Jenner, and even uh, the baby, the miniature, Wheaties boxes, the figurines, um, college, uh, championship, pins, watches, the buttons. We went to play baseball. I even had a, a bracelet made, you know, with the six jump men on there for the six championships. The books, the videotapes. My kids keep trying to get into these, <laughs> to the Hot Wheels. <laughs> they, you know, they think it's, it's just toys, but you know, the cologne that's never been opened, uh, like the, the body wash, I just never wanted to open it. I even went back to the phone. It does the introduction, you know, of, of MJ and it opens. This is a laptop bag. It has BET on it. As the actual shoe bottom. This one is from the, the Metallic 6, the 6 Low. I was blessed with a, a surprise package from New Era Caps. They sent me that about a week before it dropped. And I did a, a unboxing video and everybody was asking me where they could get that from. But what the little touch they did, they put the cigar and the champagne in there for me, which only a hundred of those released at certain champ stores. I remember back in the day chewing this gum. <laughs> the actual gum that MJ chewed, the hang time, you know, so I ended up keeping some of the packs unopened. What's your favorite uh, MJ book and favorite MJ video? Jordan to the Max is my favorite movie. I actually, uh, I went to see it at Greenfield Village and they gave me the actual poster off the wall. 
because I asked them for it. I mean, it's it's a really big poster. It's in my in my poster bin over there. And my um, favorite book is Rebound. Jordan Rules is a close second. You know, the Pistons are deny this to no end. But not only the Pistons, a lot of other teams had, you know, rules for MJ too, to try to ground him, as they say. You growing up in Detroit, I know that was, there was one time when Detroit had Chicago's number. How did you feel during that time? I mean, you're from Detroit, but you were a big Michael Jordan fan. I was one of the only ones from this area that was a Chicago Bulls fan. I just remember everybody hating MJ. They were happy when the Pistons were beating them, but once the Bulls got over the hump and started beating the Pistons, you know, People around here didn't appreciate that at all. You know, and neither did the Pistons. You saw how they walked off the court, didn't shake their hand. But um, after a while, I think his true greatness took over and people respected his accomplishments. But it took a long time for them to get over the hump to beat, first of all, the Celtics, then to beat the Pistons, and then go on to win their first of six championships. You know, but it, it took a lot for that to happen. So I guess what people will want to know right now is what are some Jordans that you're looking for that you don't have? Because like you said, you have 840. There's at least 100 pair that I don't have as far as numbered or team Jordans such as the, the Thunder 4s from 2006, um, the Myro 7s, uh, which is another international release that didn't release here in the States. Uh, the Ben 7, the Ben 9. I had a custom Ben 9 made by a guy up in uh, Chicago because I can't find a Ben 9 in my size. And if they do, it's over, you know, $2,000 and I'm just not gonna pay that much for a shoe that I'm gonna wear, you know, cause I believe in wearing my shoes. Cause there's, there's quite a bit out here that I, that I don't have that I'm still looking for. It slowed down because, you know, I have a family now and, you know, I, I've worked two or three jobs my entire life just to to be able to have what I call an addiction, you know, my love for kicks. And then I lost some shoes um, when I moved from California back here to Michigan in 95 when my mom got sick. The movers took 30 pair, you know, of my all my OGs with Nike Air on the back, but they swore they gave me uh, they delivered everything that, that they picked up when I know they didn't, but back then they didn't have the tracking system that they do now. And then I went through a divorce where I was only, I was married for less than a year, okay? And uh, I caught my wife cheating on me and she beat me to filing for divorce. She made it seem like um, I cheated on her. So they gave her a hundred pair of my shoes. She didn't get to pick them, but what she got to pick was my memorabilia, which was the autograph college jersey that was framed, the autograph basketball, autograph rookie card, you know? So it, it's been some times where I wanted to give up and just say, forget it. But then the true passion of collecting came through and I was able to get some of the stuff back that I had to give her. I persevered through it and it's, it's still in me to, to collect, display, go to sneaker events and, um, and try to help the younger people with any type of history that I can help them with.